this fall. Um, and it is uh, a, a real way to work with students and to help connect students to employers. And like um, Cal and Laura, um, I started my um, career in the corporate world, IT and engineering recruiting. And um, so it's great to bring those uh, things together in what we do with you. Okay, thank you. And now we have our Warner team with us. So Jackie, can you please introduce yourself and your team? Um, hi, my name is Jackie Keegan. I am the University Relations Specialist at Borg Warner. So I work with all the students who are our interns and co-ops who come, come and go. So I look at a lot of resumes and work with a lot of students um, throughout the year. And then I have our team. So we have a special open university team of ambassadors who are a mix of business employees as well as engineers um, to do all our events on site because let's be honest, you don't always just want to talk to me who does recruiting and things like that. You want to actually talk to the people who are doing the work. So I have a team here uh, with Brian and Lauren to help answer some questions. So. Lauren? Hi, my name is Lauren Simonian, and I work in the marketing department at Warner. I've been at Ford Warner for almost four years now, and it is a great place to work. Um, as you mentioned, we've been part of this Oakland University team for about two now, and as a team, we meet monthly to discuss, you know, different events that we can run on campus, as well as um, attend a different career fair. So we look forward to the meeting and trying to support you guys more. And morning, everybody, or afternoon, sorry. Um, I'm Brian Homich. Um, I, I feel really old because I've been at Borg Warner for 22 years. Uh, I spent uh, eight years at Ford Motor Company before coming to Borg Warner. So, so uh, the automotive industry for for quite a while. Manager in the thermal uh, emissions, thermal and turbo division. Um, and responsibility is uh, basically doing all of the testing and validation of our components for for our division. Uh, I also have uh, quite a bit of experience with the Oakland University program. I've had a couple of uh, OE interns work for me. Um, I currently have converted one of those um, interns into a full-time position that's uh, currently working for me right now. But those of you who don't know, Borg Warren is a, a large tier one automotive supplier. Uh, which means we supply directly to many of the automotive manufacturers around the globe. Um, we have approximately 30,000 employees globally. Uh, I believe we're in 19 different countries around the globe as well. Um, it's a little different right now with the COVID situation. You can tell from all of our backgrounds. I'm actually in my kid's playroom, and there's Lego Harry Potter behind my head. And not my normal office, but uh, we've, been, we've been working from home and, and making do with, with all these new changes. Um, that's a, a brief introduction, and we can continue from there. And uh, as things come up, if you, Borg Warner team or Career Services team, have anything to add, please jump in. Okay. Uh, as you do the call, if everyone can make sure that they are on mute, that just helps with the background noise. Please change your chat audience to all participants, so then if you have a question, everybody can see your question. And utilize the chat function to ask any questions. We will be entering as that we go as we go on. So if you have any questions, you can ask them that way. And recording the session. So if you need to go back at any point in time, we will be posting it up on Handshake after the session. And I am going to chat in my link once more. We fill out a Google form. Afterwards, we'll be sending out resources. And we want your email so we can send you those resources we have. Okay, first of all, um, trying to make this a little bit interactive. This is our first shot at a, a online career workshop. So 
Please chat in what is a resume. And to all participants, help so that we can see your face. That a uh, resume is. No, there's no answers here. We were before that resumes are very personal and everyone kind of has their own preferences. Okay, summary of, of who you are, educational work experience. Great. Anyone have anything else? Any other? Ideas? No, we'll have questions. Okay, a resume is a document that highlights your academic experience your work experience, your accomplishments, your skills, your strengths, and any leadership potential that you have. At the end of the day, you are using your resume to get you an interview. And it is your way that you can sell yourself to employers. Oh, someone else who responded, um, a portfolio of achievements of a person. I like that one too. Very good. Good. Okay. So what should put on your resume? So which may is, what types of things should you put on your resume? Your response to that. Experience skills summary. Okay. Very awesome. You're on the right track. Excellent. Okay. So yeah. Name and contact information. A focus is something we're encouraging students to do lately. Um, Animation, project and labs that might be relevant to the positions you're applying to, work experience, any technical skills, and then activities and achievements. Those are the things that employers are looking for on resumes. Your contact information, your name should be the largest thing on the resume. And the reason that is, is you want your name to stick out to the recruiters. And so that should be the largest thing on your resume. Make sure a professional email on your resume. I as I mentioned, I've been in industry for, uh, so I saw a lot of really interesting email addresses that were not necessarily professional. If you're not using your Oakland email address, make sure it is something professional. Um, for example, name and a number, something simple like that. Make sure you also have your phone number with voicemail set up and that your box is not full. That's also something that I came across a lot is I would call students and either they wouldn't have a voicemail set up or their voicemail box was full. It's very difficult to leave a message in either of those cases. And recruiters want to get in touch with you. So make sure you have a phone number and a voicemail and it's not full. You're unnecessary anymore. That is something from before when we would use addresses to communicate via mail. And at the point in time, most communication is done via email and phone, so we don't need your full address anymore. And white space is something that's very important on a resume. It makes it easier to read. So add that information that's not as important. We, we don't want the resume because we want to create that white space. It makes it easy for recruiters to read. Okay, uh, way to participate. You don't have to chat anything. And if you use your raise hand feature, it should be in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Does any currently have a career focus on their resume? And if you do. Coming in, okay. So a couple of people that have career focuses on their resume, awesome. So a focus, provides focus and tells the recruiters exactly what you're looking for. And it's right at the top of your resume. So if I'm a recruiter and I'm looking for a mechanical engineering intern, and right at the top of the resume, I have a career focus that says mechanical engineering intern. That's helping you go up in the search results because you are matching exactly what I am looking for. And as a recruiter, I read the title, I think, oh, look, they're looking exactly for a mechanical engineering intern. I keep reading. I want it to be nice and concise. And I want you to highlight specific skills that are in my job posting. So if in my job description, I say I'm looking for someone that has CATIA and attention to detail and Excel, and those things are in the job description, and you have those skills, then put them in that career focus. And then that's going to help you with your job search because if I'm looking for those skills, I search those skills, they cut because they're right at the top of your resume. 
are recommending that um, that you when you're using this, don't use I or me. Um, I'm very professional, and here is an example. So, uh, for his industrial engineer internship, so in systems engineering freshmen skilled in problem solving and communicating goals and project plans to large groups of people. Experienced leader with an enthusiastic attitude and the ability to motivate individuals towards a common goal. Consistently positive feedback from managers and coworkers. So I'm telling recruiters exactly what I'm looking for and what skills I have. Okay, or anybody have any questions? You can chat in questions. Or, uh, other have any feedback? Yeah. Just, a, just a comment. You know the the career folks in this in these statements on resumes. Yes, you are correct. These are definitely things that I know when I'm at at OpenU. I've been to many of the different career fairs there, um, seen hundreds and hundreds of resumes, and and these are these are really key statements. It really helps somebody like myself who is looking at these things. To see a you list some skills, uh, what your interests are, and, and kind of a, a highlight of your resume, if you will. So yes, these these are definitely very important to look and have a good and strong uh, focus as well. Yes, thank you. It is. It's exactly what the first thing you read. So that's the impression that you need to make is a positive one. Brian, it's very helpful. Okay, next thing on a resume is your education. And Matt, that we suggest that it, it recommend that putting your GPA on the resume if it's a 3.0 or above. If it's less than a 3.0, we recommend not putting that up. Our resume is projects and labs. And this is really important if you have projects and labs that are related to your field study or where you're looking to get a position. In its own hang, and you have bullet points describing what you did, any software that you used, any technical skills you used. Members are really important in resumes. So if you led a team of five members, those numbers really stick out at recruiters. Um, you also have personal projects that you could add to your resume that um, some of those personal projects can really connect to a recruiter, which makes you stand out. Go. There, no. I want you to use. Let me clear my results. Include or not include in product. My extensive product of collecting Pokemon cards. Is that something that I would want to put on my resume? Let's. Okay. Great. So everyone says no. Very. That is not something we would put on our resume. Next, the resume. Oh, let me clear my results. Okay. I have a 1965 Mustang from the wheels up. Is that something to put on your resume? Okay. Some yes, we have a couple of no's. So yes, if you are going into the automotive industry, that is something that you definitely want to put on your resume because guess what? A lot of hiring managers might have that same interest. And so it's a connection you might form with them. Brian, did you have something you wanted to say on that one? Yeah, this, this, is, this is actually a really good thing too. Um, it also shows, myself that you be interested in the automotive industry uh, and yes this actually would tip except for I'm doing a 67 Mustang fastback right now so um, but yes any projects like this car repair um, bidding um, you've done house repair anything that working with your hands first robotics project these things are really really cheap uh, for me as a as somebody that's you know interviewing um, it shows me that there's there's abilities there um, and interests outside of the classroom is what it can tie directly into engineering um, doing these kind of projects again whether it's whether it's a house rebuild or or car stuff or boat or whatever it it shows that there's problem solving and, and interest in learning how to fix things and keep things uh, functioning and mm -hmm. I have to tell teams when I'm interviewing if you don't know how to break something, you don't know how to fix it. So these things are really, really important as well. Right. Yes, Brian, I, I totally uh, agree with what you're saying. And something that we looked at 
and what we would look for students that not only had the depth of knowledge, but had the breadth of knowledge. And kind of what Brian was saying is we look for people that wanted to learn. And if you had a wide variety of things on your resume, that showed us that you wanted to learn. So, thank you. Key, you unmuted too. So do you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, one of the nice things with projects like this is, is being a student, you might not have years of internship experience or years of job experience that you have that are relevant. So some of these type of projects that you're working on are more relevant to the internship that you're trying to get. So it is nice to have that on there because it does show that problem solving abilities and different things like that. Thank you, Great. Does anyone have any questions, specific projects about if it's something that should be included? If you do, lots of experts that could help with that question. Okay. Well, if you have those questions, pop them in. We'll answer them as they come up. Or I just say one more thing too yeah. on the projects, like Brian mentioned, whether it's a house project and whatnot, but this could also include projects in a specific class. Um, it doesn't have to be a club or anything, but if it's you know any type of projects where you're working in a group for more than one person, um, it's great to include and bring up when saying. Great. Thank you. Uh, kind of what Lauren alluded to, these I have here a class project and then a fiddle and technical project. So, the um, example for a class project was Krispy Kreme optimization, a team of five to make the donut, pro donut producing process more efficient at a local Krispy Kreme chain, increasing throughput by reducing bottlenecks in the baking process, applying the rest of the work case, and reducing waste. So. This is a good example because again it, it shows that you led a team of five, so it has a number in there, and it talks about leadership, which is important. And that's some key words. It talks about efficiency, uh, it talks about process, it talks about five S, about reducing waste. So those key terms that, especially in the manufacturing area, they're going to be looking for, and will pop out to recruiters. And one is more of an example of a personal project. Install Windows Server 2012 R2 on server hardware and configure, configure act as backup server for home computers as well as use file server. So this is not a work experience, but it's something that is very relevant, especially if you are trying to go into a technical field. Okay. okay. So it looks like answering some of my chat questions. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't know if I should or whatever. No, that makes my life easier. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay. So, in what section of the resume would you place self teaching a program language or any other engineering related skill? Um, as we go on, there's a technical skills section, and oftentimes I encourage students to put them on that technical skill. Okay. All skills is the next section of resume. And that's you would include those hard skills. So any uh, computer softwares, you know, any computer languages, any spoken languages, any certifications, that would be in the technical skill section. But again, the hard skills, the ones that are um, that are easily quantifiable, the programs, the languages, certifications, the soft skills, more public speaking, organization, time management. We don't put that in those sections, but we talk about those in your summary statement and your bullets and evidence of transferable skills. So you would those more soft skills, bullets, and the hard skills you would put in a technical section like this. So we recommend the programming language, applications, operating systems up in your resume. And the soft skills, there's an example of how they're highlighted in the career focus. So did that answer the question about the technical skills and self-teaching the program? Okay. okay, the next section that we dive into is your experience. And this one can vary depending on what type of experience you have. If you have internship experience, you might title it internship experience. If you have work experience that isn't internship experience, but you have a lot of skills that you've developed that could be transferable, Maybe at work experience, or maybe have volunteer experience that you want to list. So you really kind of think of your experience and what you want to highlight, and then you call it one of those things uh, upon what you decide. The services team is always here to help you if you need help. 
figure it out. Rum, have your most recent experience first, as the Borg team has alluded to. When you're looking at resumes, you're looking at hundreds of resumes. And you used to seeing a typical set, and when you're looking at a resume, you want to be able to find information quickly. So it's very typical to have your most recent experience first. And then, again, when you're reading down, you want to put your most important information first because they might not read the first or second bullet. So you don't want to put your most important skills in the third or fourth bullet because they not, not get there. So make you put that most important, relevant, and transferable task in the first bullet. Present for current positions and past tense for past positions. So if I'm currently working, I use present tense. Anything that I've done before, I use past tense. And core achievements with numbers. As scanning through resumes, numbers pop out at you. Okay, my most recent is not my most relevant experience. Um, so that could be an opportunity to use different sessions too. So your most relevant experience is an internship. Maybe you title internship experience, and then you put that one that's older, and maybe below that you put related experience. So let's say I had an internship at GM. Maybe I put that, and that was last summer. I have a section that says internship experience with that. And then underneath that, maybe I have a job at 11. I put related experience instead of that. And that could be a way to highlight that internship experience first. Okay, other thoughts on that one? Asking questions. This makes it much more interesting. Yeah, I, I think I think for something like that, you know, there isn't necessarily an opinion, maybe any one right way. Um, but again, if if you really want to stress the the relative to the process in which you're going on, and if it is maybe out of order in that instance, um, also have the ability to talk in the interview and explain why you ordered things a little bit differently. Or maybe you did just leave it in chronological order. Um, but you can highlight that. You can say, yes, I'm still working at 7-Eleven, but, you know, focus on my internship at General Motors or something. So um, you have, as a student, you also have the ability to highlight some of the things that you think the potential employer should see as well. Uh, leave it up to us always to find everything on your resume. You walk up and hand us a resume. We have five to 10 minutes max, and there's a line of people if, if we were face-to-face. -face. Um, so it also, you know, there are definitely things that you want to highlight. Bring that up to us in case we miss them. Tell yourself to us, too. And I mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, 